126. So recall that in the last exercise we introduced factors reflects limit and colimit. So here in this exercise we're going to prove the following theorem. Let's give it a name, call limits, commute with limits. I will put a link at the very end. So I'm following the method found on the web page. So the statement is at F I product J to save your factor. If limit j f i j exists for any fixed i then we find that limit i, limit j, f i j exists if and then if double indexed limit exists. In which case I cannot call it isomorphic. In particular, slim i, slim j, f i j isomorphic to lim j lim i f i j in this sense we say limit community with limit if both sides exist so this is firstly very ge very general result right so this could in particular tell us many things, for example, product preserves kernel and so preserves monomorphies. And as you could imagine, duly coproduct should preserve surjectivity, preserves epimorphism. Preserved co kernel, right? There are many results you could imagine. Also, uh, inversely made should preserve kernel and hence is left exact. Directly made should be right exact, something like that. Okay, very nice. So let's see how to prove this. I'm not going to prove all, maybe. So let's go into first prove a weaker version. Let's first say what has happened on the category of sets. So remark firstly what is slim i slim j f i j so it means that firstly you think
dysmorphism in I. Category I. This induces a natural transformation. I'm assuming this this is a covariant functor right? on both on both arguments. Then this gave This is a morphism. J. J. So this is in C. And then you could take limit for J. I was assuming if this limit exists, still mapping C, right? So this is lib J, F by J. any J. Think of this as diagram, this is a cone. Okay. And then you have another cone. And recall that we have this connecting map. So here you have a community diagram, and then community diagram here. Ending this morphism here. Naturality diagram commutes actually gives commute diagram with objects here. That's why the universal property of universal universal cone you should factorize through this. Let's give this map. Let's give it a name. Let's call it Lim J F so it's through small F J
And so what is this telling us? It's telling us that you could regard this as a functor. And we do know by this the limit of this functor. Okay. Let's prove prove this result. Let's first prove this for the case. Let's say the category of set by direct computation. So if H is factor from I to set, in other words, a diagram of type of shape, sorry, of shape I. So you have H, the diagram here. The limit is a cone about this diagram, which means it's a universal cone, but in other words, but alternatively we could describe this directly because this is set. So this is elements from product, Cartesian product, such that for any f of i to i prime, so there is Compatibility condition. Here I put a remark. So in the category of a set from a singleton to object so by the property of home is it the same as Move this uh, limit outside, right? Which is which I itself. This is the universal. This is the universal cone. Over the diagram, which
Well, you could think of this as saying that this is a diagram. If you put one here, then this is also a cone, and this factorizes through this. This is saying that the conclusion is that this is isomorphic to the set of cones over H. We assume it. Singleton set one. So any element here. corresponds to one cone with assume it single to one there could be many different cones with assume it one but each one each cone of this type corresponds to one element of the limit so as a set you can think of this as a collection of all those cones Second remark. So this category of set is complete. And so all limits exist. And when we say co limit, if the co limit exists.
truth. Let f be a factor. Then by the formula for limits in set, for each i in i, we have lim j I J. So all those Here you could think of this fixed i, right? We first fix i, then f i is just a factor from j to z. And then the limit as we described, this just consists of all those elements in the product of sets such that to form a cone. This limit is a cone to satisfy the community of all those diagrams for any G for any J. Something happened in the diagram. And then uh sorry, more more precisely. So what I'm putting here is this F I This is the diagram. So this is the, this is a diagram of shape J. And then for any diagram in the shape, then you have this. This is this is a diagram in set. And then your objects always satisfies. So there is a commutative diagram in the sense that if i j of x j equals x j prime. So here we are using the structure that this is the map, the subset of this set, but the map is just by the projection factor. something in the diagram.
so the limit is contained here and then here you take your elements then this is mapped xj here this is mapped xj prime here and the diagram commutes tells you that this is the condition okay Now, moreover, given a map with the first argument category I, we have so firstly F as we explained in the first remark F I. J is the map to F. A prime of J, so assuming it's contravariant in both arguments, covariant. Co and then, as we explained, if you wiring J take a form system and then define what is the limit, then again, by universal probability factorize, give you this factor giving this map of set and let's call this fj lim fj lim fij here for so we fix i here we fix i then for wiring j we got by the similar description as here with already this this is mapped to again element in this limit this is mapped to f f of j of x j by the universal property if you want Think of the universal property here. This is connected by mapping a compatible system here through FFG to another compatible system. So what can we say? Lean I and then lim j for fij this is just two steps right so you first take limit j and then limit i then let's start from the second one for wiring i elements from the set of already taking limit j such that there's a compatible and yeah from i to i prime i lib j f of f j on this uh, y j gives you a j prime is also isomorphic to double index i and j because each y y i is element of here and so this y i could also be written as some x i j so you fix this i here and then you are in j for this element there phi j such that and then there is further condition so there is one condition for y i 
but then there's a second condition for xij regarding maps between in xj for fixed i put it together this is in f i j x i j equal x i j prime for any j from j to j prime in j and f f j x i j equal i am prime j for any f from i to i prime in i So this actually takes some time to think about it. fix i we look at j and we fix j we look at i Here is a typo. We fix J, we look at I. And then this condition, for example, this is defined for YI. YI is a couple. YI is a couple here. But then, actually, this lim really actually it x component wisely on each. So this is a lim f. Here we remove the leaf. It turns out to be acting on component wisely on each position. Okay, so. Then we come back to putting in x i as the first or we not necessarily directly prove this to commute commuting we just have to prove double index limit isomorphic to taking j limit and then i limit All right then we now work with double limit it's the same as in double limit by j such that for any couple of maps from This thing is just
could rewrite this as a double index. Before we were seeing that fix i, then what happened on the second index j and fix j what on the second index i. This is the same as you could apply it to uh, restriction on both i and j index at the same time. This is just saying that if you fix the row, you look at each column, the element. There is a compatible condition. If you fix each column, look at each uh, element on the same column, they have some condition. And then it's the same as requiring on each use condition arbitrary element um, okay, at a fixed position with column i, uh, row i, column j. Right. This is the lean. Fij. And then this is okay, then. You just prove so you could start with i and then start with j they will finally again isomorphic to this okay let me continue with the proof General case. General case not necessary for the category of the set, but you need an embedding. So, remark. And also recall. So, you need an embedding. is let's say preserves limits this is what we claimed as sub exercise in the last exercise and reflects limit and co limits what we proved the last video so if J from I to say this diagram you see Then this limit of those objects GI, sorry, then the limit of those objects GI is say this. If and only if the limit of there, you need an embedding like this.
and my over is isomorphic too. Then you need an embedding of some object, small c. And in this case, to this limb i j i must be isomorphic to c as object of category c. So let's go to the proof as before. Let's start with functor f. So not necessarily map to set, but to category C. Be a functor. And suppose slim j of j exists in C for any i fixed. Now we applied in the embedding. And then we have the limit could we move outside. Now, lima i lim j, f i j exists, and is isomorphic to this object C. Even then, if Something so we're going to instead of discussing this limit in C, we want to discuss the similar information on its unit embedding. So I'm going to say this limit exists if and only if kind of the limit i of this exists. This is something happening. Mm, the factor with target set, right? There exists a natural, or well, there is natural isomorphism.
So we're going to take limit i for those factors. Because if the limit i of this factor like this, then let's see what happens. This will be isomorphic to again move this aside. Let's say if this exists, then of course you just put it here and this satisfies those because the limit of it exists. In the category of the set. So this actually implies the fact that the limit always exists. So the fact that the limit uh, the set is complete implies that the functor category of set is also complete. The functor category of complete category is again complete this is my question Of functor, what I'm asking is the category, or, I'm, or are we assuming this is the category? Let me check the condition. At least what I could say that under the assumption that we already know, admitting that we already know that we need an embedding preserves limit, then we know that the need an embedding of a limit is again a limit, which means 
the limit of these factors must exist, which means we don't have to assume anything else. Okay, so I put here sub exercise. Maybe this is tri trivially true or more general, but for what we know, but for what we need, our knowledge about the name band preserves limit is already sufficient. But my question maybe this is maybe that result we are using is a particular example or situation of this question. If so, there is a home functor. Let's say we have f from a C to D so if D is complete then D is complete, then is a category from C to D complete. So this is recall this is all the functors from C to D. Right. My question. So my question is Twofolds. Firstly, uh, home functors. So, so a weaker question is. A weaker question is. This seems should come directly from unit embedding, but let me put it as a sub exercise here. Is the functors, the home functors from let's say a fixed so all those objects, all those functors. So this is contained in I'm sorry, so this should be the enter the notation. This is this complete? Same as yes, because we are looking at here. Our argument is that the limit of this always exists. And this is it could be defined to be Okay, here. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Uh, we're also assuming that the limit on CEOP exists. Mm -hmm. My question is a little tricky. which I want to say is that my question is if C is complete would that imply the founders defined from C to D complete? Same that this is complete Safe plus D is complete, both are complete.
we know that the limit of this exists because we know that you need an embedding preserves limits. So this is saying that this must be the limit of this function. Must be the limit. So which means it must exist. Okay, let's come back here. If you have the limit, double limit exists, then we have this because you just put C to become, become this double limit. You call this double limit and then it gives you this isomorphism. Conversely, if you have this isomorphism, then this then you have this double limit. Now continue with the proof, back to the proof. Now, from the case of set, we have the lim i, lim j, This is the category of set. And check that this is natural in the position C prime. So we have Now, lean I J F I J exists. If and only if there exists. natural isomorphy
So we turn this same question of the existence of double limit into the double limit of a functor which has target in the set, in the category of a set. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that both limit exists if and only if the same condition holds. So this exists if and only if this exists. And under that case, they are isomorphic because, because this is equivalent as we described. J sorry, this is D my leg J home C F I J isomorphic to Wow, this is known from the knowledge of set to be isomorphic to Wow, this condition of isomorphism is equivalent to this limit exists. So that's why we prove this.